Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be giving you a breakdown on our recent shoot that we did. And it's a bit of a smaller shoot, a little bit of a quicker shoot, um, but we think it's a pretty cool one. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So, first of all, what is the product? The product that we're doing is actually called the Pumpkin Gaffer. And what it is, is a little light for lighting your jack-o'-lantern. It's an alternative to a tea light or a candle or any of that type of stuff. And the great thing about it is it has these little feet that you can stick into the back of the face. That way, when you look into the jack-o'-lantern, you, you don't see the tea light, you don't see the actual source of the light. It actually shines onto the back of the jack-o'-lantern more evenly lighting it. Hey, what are you doing over here? Oh, we're putting a little tea candle in there. Why, that's the enemy. I know, right? Well, we're trying to show how, how you can see the light in there. But the great thing is with these pumpkin little gaffers. Oh yeah, dude, I can see it right there. It's blinding me. It's yeah. just ruining the whole effect. Yeah, it's like, does he have one really bright eye or does he have one really bright tooth? We don't know. So as you can see, this little guy pops in here. It's like a little crystal ball. Just like that. And to turn it on, you simply pull that out. Voila. Put it in. And then this, I'll show here. As you can imagine, back here on the inside, so you won't see the light, simply just presses in. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so you can like a little dagger. You could even do that if you wanted. Probably you could put it wherever you want inside the pumpkin without the viewer seeing where the light's coming from, and the pumpkin is illuminated without seeing the light. The cool thing is this is made by the same people that created the pumpkin gutter, which we made a short film about last year. What? Which was a bit of a longer film. So we're we're not doing something as as intensive as we did last year for that but you can check out the behind the scenes that we did on that. We did a pretty extensive setup with some of those, so I'd really encourage you to check that out. Um, but onto this, this product video and what we're filming here. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to film something within a day's time. We wanted to do it relatively quick, uh, just because we need to get this video out as, as the season's coming upon us pretty quickly here. So we decided that we were gonna do something in studio, all one location, and try to kind of fake a scene using a TV as our background and a simple dirt type foreground setup that I'm gonna be going over here in a second. Uh, we decided to do this, like I said, for time's sake to try to get this out quick so we weren't having to do a ton of different setups. Uh, and the great thing about this and the reason we wanted to show you is it, it's a really relatively cheap setup. Jumping right into it, the first thing that we did is we used a simple folding table. We got some plastic just to make cleanup a little bit easier for us. So. We did the plastic, we got two bags of just basic dirt, laid them down here. We had some fake foliage that we had laying around that worked with the scene. The only real thing that we actually bought was these spooky Halloween fences that we got from Spirit Halloween. Uh, we wanted to kind of dress up the scene a bit more and add a little bit of depth to it. And then for the background with the TV, we just have a full moonlit kind of cloudy night to give it that blue kind of spooky look to it. We also did do another scene where it is uh, trees and kind of a foggy tree scene in the background, which is what we used these for in the scene. Uh, and that one I thought turned out really good too. It kind of blended the scene really nicely in the, from the foreground into the background by doing this, uh, just propping a few of these up and it looked like actual trees in the scene. The other thing that I think really tied this entire scene together was the ground fogger. This thing was really essential, or just a fogger in general, but the ground fogger was really, really critical because in my mind what it did is it really helped blend the horizon of the foreground into the background. It kind of blurred that line and made it difficult to distinguish where the foreground ended and where the background started. So that's a pretty awesome piece of gear. It actually uses ice so the fog goes through it and it kind of keeps the fog low kind of stays on the ground instead of just filling the space. And we actually kind of carved out a bit of a trench here. As you can see, we have a few of the leaves that have moved, but uh, we kind of carved out a trench. This kind of helped the fog move into the scene the way that we wanted. And we also use some, you can just use foil, but some foil and some cardboard to just kind of help direct the fog. Just because when we first started running it, what was, what was happening is it was uh, flowing over the side of the table here. So that's kind of how that setup worked. Um, another cool thing that we wanted to add with the scene was, uh, if you notice in the spot, these, uh, these fake plants actually had a little bit of movement to them. So for, for that, we actually 
Just had a few of our guys, Joel and Keenan, were in the background and just giving it slight tugs like this just to help give it some movement. Joel's getting his jiggling instruction. That's some really good jiggling. Originally, our plan was we got a fan and we thought, well, maybe if we direct the fan in the right way, we can get it to blow it just right and give it that really natural motion that we were going for. But that really caused a lot of problems with the fog, as you might expect, even if it was directed away from it, just because that fog really needs to be still. Otherwise, it goes all over the place. So we just resorted to, you know, guys pulling on it and wiggling it. So these were our two subjects in the scene that we were filming. Now, one thing that we were running into and we were having a lot of issues with was glare. We had the Lecos and the different lights and a lot of different angles and we were getting hot spots. And especially with this bag and especially with this label, we were getting really shiny spots. So to combat that and to fix that, what we ended up using was some doling spray, which this stuff works great and I would suggest everyone have it. If you're doing any sort of product videos, I think it's super, super useful. So what we did is we just sprayed the label with a little bit of doling spray and it really helped the problem that we're having with the glare. So here's the texture that we have with the doling spray applied and here's the texture of the label regularly. So it made a huge difference, really, really helpful stuff. And we used it on the pumpkin as well just because the pumpkin naturally did have some shiny spots to it. All right, we're taking a little intermission from shooting to uh, do a little uh, specialty shot where it involves cutting a pumpkin in half. There you go, we got pumpkin seeds, we got pumpkin goo, we got everything you'd want. Now we can get that sweet inside shot we we're hoping for. Showing the installation of the pumpkin gaffer right, right in the forehead, right in between the eyes there. Right there, bing bong. There it is, that's how we'll get it. Or yep. else, how would you get a camera in a pumpkin? You just can't do it. A really tiny, probably a camera for ants would be what you would need for that shot. Going into the TV bit a little bit more, I wanted to talk about this. This isn't a new concept. This isn't something that we came up with, obviously. Uh, this has been done a lot before. But the really cool thing about using a TV is versus something like a green screen is the interactive light that you get. When you're shooting with a green screen, oftentimes you'll get a little bit of green spill. Uh, when you're shooting with a green screen, if you're doing any type of dolly or movement with it, you have to do a lot more work in post with tracking and your background and making it believable. When you're using a screen like this, you can do movement super easy um, and it really doesn't require a lot of post work if you do it right you know, in camera. So that's, that's one great thing and like I said, versus having a green splash that's coming back onto your subject, you're getting that interactive light. So because we have kind of a blue background, you're naturally getting a little bit of that blue light spilling onto your scene. With the tree scene, it was especially helpful because the horizon line in that image was very noticeable. So being able to adjust that image from the computer and being able to move it up and down to get that horizon line to match up perfectly with our horizon line here was super, super nice and being able to see what it looks like in camera was awesome. Now, the downsides with it is you can't do a lot of big stuff unless you have a gigantic TV. Now, this is a 65 inch TV and it works decently well for small products, stuff like this, but it's still limited with how much you can move around and where your camera can be uh, just because 65 inches when you're using it as a back, backdrop and a background uh, becomes pretty small pretty quick. Now, thankfully, TVs are getting cheaper and cheaper every day, uh, and a lot of people have them. But for smaller products, it works awesome, and we really liked how it looked, and we think it's a really viable option. So another thing when shooting screens like this is the reflectivity of the screen itself is crazy. So you have to be super, super careful that you're not getting reflections of the camera or lights or stands or any of that stuff in the TV screen, which helps when you're lighting from the same side that the screen is, but even with the Lecos, we had to be really careful where we were positioning them and making sure they weren't in the background. Now, the other thing we did is we set up some negatives on the right side, we set up negatives on the left side. So that's another downside of shooting with screens. It's not a huge one, but it is something to be aware of and something you definitely have to work around. So now moving on to kind of the lighting and the light setup of how we lit things. Now, with the backdrop for this scene, we had the full moon coming in from the top left there, and we really wanted to motivate from that to help it blend into the scene more. So what we did is we used a Quasar Science with an LCD grid on it, and we set it to a bit of a cooler temperature back there. We really wanted to motivate from that moonlight, um, and we put the grid on there just to help control spill, 
because we wanted this to be a pretty dark and moody scene and we didn't want to light the scene super bright. Uh, so that's what we did there. And then from over here, we did another cool light and this was just kind of help with ambient fill for the most part. And that was the Nova P300C. Uh, so those were our two backlights. And then all we did for the key lights were two Lico's. Like I said, we wanted this to be pretty dark and moody. So we went with two Lico's for this because we really wanted to focus in on both the pumpkin here and the product that was gonna be sitting in here. And we wanted to do it so it wasn't overly obvious that the it was being lit by a spotlight, but just subtle enough to bring up the levels and see the product easy. So we used the 26 and 36 degree Lico's and we just used the, the shutters to really craft and create small little windows of light to illuminate those, those two subjects. And that's really all that we did for the lighting. It was just those four lights. Um, pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, it was a little bit trickier working with, with a small scene like that and especially trying to light something as small as this with a Leco. Um, you really had to be pretty precise in just getting that. But um, we think it turned out really great um, and that's kind of how our lighting breakdown went. If you guys found this helpful, let us know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future, uh, we'd love to make more if you guys are interested. Um, but with that, that pretty much wraps up the breakdown of this pumpkin gaffer product video. And again, if you wanna see what we did with the pumpkin gutter video and the short film breakdown that we did with that, there's a ton of great behind the scenes videos uh, and clips that we did for that. You can check that out in the description below. And with that, I'm Caleb and thanks for watching guys.